is the Supreme Court says Manhattan DA can get Trump's tax records, but rejects bid by House Democrats. Now, this is a story I've been watching, developing for a few weeks, uh, yeah, longer even, but in the last few weeks, specifically around the Supreme Court coming to this decision. And I haven't covered any of the, the lead up to this because I knew, you know, hey, it's just, you, you, it, it's going to be worthless when you get the, the actual story that comes out here. And, and here's how it is finally played out. The Supreme Court on Tuesday delivered split opinions in two cases over whether President Donald Trump can shield his tax records from investigators handing a win to the Manhattan District Attorney, but rejecting parallel efforts by Democrats in the House of Representatives. Both cases were decided seven to two with Chief Justice John Roberts authoring the court's opinion and joined in the majority by Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, Alina Kagan, Brett Kavanaugh, and Neil Gorsuch. Justices Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito dissented in both cases. So they are, uh, of course, subject to further review by lower courts. The mixed rulings mean the American public is unlikely to learn about Trump's financial records or tax information before November's election. The decision marks the first time that the nation's highest court has directly ruled on a matter involving Trump's personal dealings. Trump has been more secretive with his finances than any president in decades, refusing to release his tax records to the public, even as he mounts a bid for re-election. And just, do you, you know, like, this, this is an issue that, like, as, as a libertarian, I'm, I'm really torn on. Like, I... Should we be allowed to to choose uh, leaders who are secretive and you know financially maintain their privacy? Yeah, of course. Should you be able to force them on other people? I mean, because they really, when you vote for president of the United States, you are not voting to choose your leader. You you have a right to do that. You have a right to follow, to uh, associate with whomever you want. But when you vote for president, you're, I mean, implicitly supporting and endorsing, I mean, unless you vote libertarian, unless you vote to dissolve the federal government. But if you're voting, say, with the intent of I want Trump or I want Biden, I want the Republican, I want the Democrat to be president, and I want every American to be forced to accept this person as their leader, you're not just doing a righteous thing for yourself. You're really not... Is it unethical to vote? Of course not. You're just going and checking a box. It's a personal expression of preference. But uh, the, the, you know, the real criminality is holding an election and forcing the results on people. And most people who vote support that system and are endorsing that. So is it a failure of the system that uh, operates with secrecy and violates individual rights that it has a figurehead who has certain financial secrecy? No, like I don't, I really don't. Here. But it is what it is. This is where we are today, man. It is what it is. I hate hearing other people say that. You know, reluctance and acceptance. Because that's not what I'm saying here. But as an acknowledgement of the present reality, this is who our president is. As, as Trump himself tweeted about this, the Supreme Court sends case back to lower court arguments to continue. This is all political, a political prosecution. I won the Mueller witch hunt and others, and now I have to keep fighting in a politically corrupt New York. Not fair to this presidency or administration. People want this, like, and this is this is what is really sad, you know. And I'm, I hope this comes out. I, I hope I, I do think this is, you know, a positive case when this goes down to the lower courts. Uh, as, as, it's, as the article says, in one lower court hearing in New York, an attorney for the president said that Trump would theoretically be immune from investigation even if he shot someone on New York's Fifth Avenue. And this is because Trump claimed during the 2016 campaign that he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, which sadly was somewhat true because of the fervency and commitment of his base. And the worship without question, because he had reached and, and, and touched a nerve in the American psyche that played to so much American insecurity. People don't support Trump for 
reasons and, and logic. They do it for, for the feels. And, you know, as, as Ben Shapiro famously said, the facts don't care about your feelings. And no matter how much Trump makes you feel good and, and masculine and empowered and, oh, I'm not just some poor little, you know, beta male because now I have an alpha male representing me in the White House. <laughs> Sorry. The fact remains that the guy's a liar, a huckster. And it makes perfect sense that someone like Trump and as his tax returns might reveal with his bankruptcies and financial manipulations and dishonesty, that someone like him is the head of this dishonest racket of a government is really entirely appropriate. But the fact about how we are stuck in this situation is that people care and vote more based on feelings rather than facts. And if America wants to make any progress, that's going to have to change.